Hey guys, I'm Shadow Knight Paladin and welcome back to my channel. Today we're back in the, with another traditional art speed paint video and we are still using watercolors. I'm still using the Reeves 18 artist set. These are tube paints. I believe they are student grades. I've, I've never seen them being mentioned when people compare uh, artist grade products. So I'll say they are student grade. And the paper that I'm using is a Canson watercolor pad. And unlike the last, or rather the first traditional art video that I did, I was using the sketch pad, which was a mistake. I already did have this watercolor pad when I did that video, but it was just a result of me not planning well for the video and not really getting things sorted out before I did the video. So the pad is 200 GSM, it has 24 leaves, it's 9 by 12 which is the size that I usually prefer when I do uh, bigger, slightly bigger pieces. So I just really want to talk about the pad real quick. I am somewhat familiar with Canton products in the sense that I, when I was learning how to do or how to paint watercolors in a class in school, uh, our prof told us to go to this, to this local art shop called Beauvier and he just told us to look for the Canson watercolor paper and they gave us this really huge ass paper that's it's they roll it and you just cut it up to whatever size you prefer however I don't know any details about that paper I don't know what GSM it is I don't know if it's cold press or hot press the only thing I can say is that it's pretty thin but it handles water very well it doesn't buckle so much it's also very reworkable but it's also not slippery because this watercolor pad is a bit slippery in my opinion like it doesn't dry to it doesn't absorb the weight the water immediately but it also takes some time for the paint to settle properly into the paper itself uh, the, the loose leaf that i use is almost textureless there's a little bit of texture but it's not really toothy like normal watercolor paper so compared to that this sketch pad was a bit new to me in the sense that uh, I did need to wait for the paint to settle down before I did the washes it also kind of leaves some paint remarks when the water dries but that's easily workable since the paper itself is very slippery and if you've used this pad, you would know what I mean when I say it's slippery. Because the first watercolor pad that I ever bought is this Berkeley watercolor pad. And it's bigger. It has 180 gsm paper. But it really sucked up all the water. It was so difficult to work with. I actually have a, a video scheduled that talks about the pad it'll be one of the very few reviews on my channel so maybe you can stay tuned into that so this drawing i'm working on is as you can see by now it's a bit different than my normal style if you follow me on deventart tumblr or instagram you would know that i usually use lines or have some form of line art unless you well, that's discounting the homework that I did for the painting class that I partook in. But this time I bought it back because I feel that it really works well with the theme that I wanted to go with. This piece is actually inspired by Drop Pop Candy, which is a Vocaloid song sung by Hatsune Miku and Megurine Luka. And it's very upbeat and if you've seen the music video for it, it has really nice pastel colors and it's very candy-like, I guess you could say. And I really, well, not aside from getting inspired by it, it also got stuck in my head. And the colors also got stuck in my head, so I felt the need to make a drawing inspired by it. And I was listening to several versions. I was listening to the original, which I mentioned is by Miku and Luca. I also have the version of Meiko and Kaito. Which, as you can see, I am drawing Kaito. If you're familiar with Vocaloids, you might have noticed that by now. Or he could be just any other blue-haired anime boy. 
but he's supposed to be Kaito without the scarf. And I also thought that I haven't drawn him in a long, long while. And if you know me, he's my Vocaloid bias. Despite no matter how many Vocaloid boys come out, second in line would probably be V2 Yuma or V2, as some other people would like to correct. That you only call him by V2 and not by Yuma. But Yuma's a nice name, so. So, since I did want to keep the soft feeling to the piece, I opted not to do really dark line art in the sense that the fine a, a black fine liner feels like it would break or to make things too jarring. There will be line art later on, you'll see it, so it's more blended in with the colors. So I'm going to talk about the color scheme real quick, <laughs> or not really quick actually. Um, I kept the more darker and colder colors on the character itself, Kaito, and I was using more uh, warmer tones for the background since I was sort of doing the more post-rain effect to this, as you can see with the water splotches around. So I tried to keep things pastel for the background or light and not too distracting while keeping the character himself a good dark cold contrast. Later I will tie everything in with the yellow wash just to make things cohesive that he's not just a character placed on the background at least. And then I felt that like the right side was a bit empty and it, it could use a little bit more texture so I added some little leaves just to make things feel softer. One tip that I would suggest that when you're using this Tansen pad is that to give your paint some time to dry. Just because it's dry to touch doesn't mean it's actually dry. You'll see when I do the bricks later, I add a yellow wash over it. It kind of erased the bricks a little. And while it did work out nice, if you're not if you have a specific image in mind, it might not really work out for you. So give it some time to dry. Maybe work on some other parts like the entire background and go back to it again. So it doesn't dry quickly, so be careful. And then now I'm lining it with uh, a Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen. Usually I use these as markers since they are brush markers. But I also saw a lot of people using a brush pen to line their drawings. Or a brush marker to line their drawings as well. And I wanted to give it a shot. Because, just because I felt like some of the details, like a seam in the pants, would really work nicely to make the entire thing look more detailed and more finished. So we are nearing the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed 
and I really have a lot of fun doing traditional art recordings and please leave a comment or maybe like the video if you enjoyed this entire thing subscribe if you want to see more videos that are that are mostly speed paints some are fan art some are original character designing and the like and follow me on tumblr instagram and deviantart and i will see you guys around mm -hmm.